call to order the September 20, 2011 meeting of the Town of Cape Elizabeth Planning Board. The first item on our agenda is the minutes of the previous meeting. Does anyone have any comments on the minutes? Would anyone like to make a motion? Liza. I make a motion to approve the minutes of the last one. Second. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? The vote is unanimous. Thank you. New business on the agenda, Golden Ridge Subdivision Amendment, fifth lot. Golden Ridge LLC is requesting an amendment to the previously approved Golden Ridge Subdivision to add a fifth lot located at the end of Golden Ridge Lane under Section 1625, Amendments to Previously Approved Subdivision. Would the applicant like to make a presentation? Yes. Good evening. My name is John Mitchell, Mitchell Associates. Um, and I represent Golden Ridge Lane LLC, of which Sheldon Goldman is the uh, principal owner. <clears throat> uh, Sheldon is a summer resident of uh, Cape Elizabeth. The first slide is a uh, aerial photo that shows the property in context with the uh, surrounding properties. Um, this is Route 77, uh, which uh, Golden Ridge Lane has access off of. Uh, Two Lights Road is located here. Um, Great Pond is located up to the northwest. So Golden Ridge Lane uh, comes off of Route 77 in this location here, which is directly opposite the ice cream uh, store. And um, provides access to three existing home lots. Um, prior to Sheldon purchasing this property, this was a three lot subdivision. Uh, lot one, uh, Amy Powell owns. Lot two, Steve and Leslie Powell own, or, who are located here. And then lot three was the, the remaining uh, land. Uh, the total parcel consists of a uh, little over 15 acres. This is a plan of the uh, 2011, May 2011 amended subdivision plan. If you remember, um, we were here before you with a um, uh, two lot, or actually this is a four lot subdivision. Uh, the three existing lots, and then we created an additional lot uh, to make it a four lot subdivision. And we provided, um, uh, this is the road extension of Golden Ridge Lane, a new Hammerhead turnaround to replace the existing Hammerhead turnaround here. Uh, so this became lot three, which is a, a 80,000 square foot lot, and then the balance of the back land became lot four. Uh, this was approved in May, and um, it has not yet been recorded. Uh, if you remember, we came before you to, um, to get an extension on the uh, recording um, of the plan. This is the plan that is before you the amended subdivision plan that shows um, one additional lot. So this becomes a five lot subdivision now. Uh, lot one, lot two, lot three, lot four, and lot five. Uh, the road is in the exact same place as previously approved. Uh, there has been no change to the infrastructure uh, of the subdivision. Um, we are still proposing a to replace the existing water line with an eight inch water main down to a, a new hydrant located in this location. And um, then we're going to extend a four inch main to, main to service the three new lots. Um, it's very difficult to see on this plan, but um, we have located uh, 
where the existing snowmobile trail um, is, and that is right in this location here. It's, it's uh, primarily on lot four. And all it is is, well, a lot of you have been out there to see it. Um, it's just a, um, an area where um, it has been marked snowmobile and it's been used uh, by snowmobilers. Um, so if, if, if you look on your hard copy plans, uh, you'll see a dotted line and that represents the existing snowmobile trail. Um, at this point, um, we've reviewed this with Sheldon Goldman, and we've, we have reviewed the options of either paying the fee to the town, this is under the open space impact fee, to either pay the fee or to provide um, the required open space. Uh, the fee amounts to $8,640 for the two new lots. And the open space is approximately 20, 25,000 square feet, I believe. And it's Sheldon's um, feeling that he would uh, rather pay the impact fee to the town rather than encumbering uh, lot four with a, um, an easement. We have uh, received comments from AMAC. Um, basically, there was only one uh, substantive comment, and we have addressed that. It was a very minor comment. In fact, it was an inadvertent uh, error. Um, the test pit, the new test pit located on lot five, was inadvertently labeled uh, 9A, which there already is a test pit 9A. So we have changed that. We've revised that to test pit number 100 and uh, resubmitted um, documentation to that effect. Um, and just the, the last two slides uh, just show the detailed road plan and profile. That's the front section of Golden Ridge Lane, um, and that is the rear section of Golden Ridge Lane. And essentially, those two sheets, um, other than the property line which divides lot four and five in this location here, those two plans have not changed. That concludes my uh, our presentation. Okay. Um, at this point, I think we'll open the floor for public comment. Are there any members of the public who would like to speak to this application? Anyone wish to speak? Come on forward, yes. Oh, no? Okay. Looks like there's no one here who would like to speak, so we will close the public comment period. Um, members of the planning board, what questions do you have? I have a preliminary question. It's my understanding that you intend to record the currently pending subdivision plan, is that right? Because if not, I think the current one may need some fleshing out and whatever our resolution would be would also need some fleshing out differently, I think, than it's been presented to us. Yeah. It I think I indicated um, at the workshop meeting, it all has to do with the timing of, of this proposal. Right. The, the deadline is November, uh, November 14, or right around there. Um, so if we, if we get down to that date and we have to record the previous plan, we will. I guess my, my concern is that there were conditions on the approval of the previous plan um, and changes requested to the previous plan that if you're not going to record that plan, we would need to make sure every detail from that plan is picked up with this one, whereas the material we've been presented looks as though the change here 
is very minor. If you don't record the prior plan, then I think we need to analyze the plans in a different way. I think it would be more efficient for you and certainly more efficient for us if you recorded the prior plan and then recorded a new plan, assuming okay. that goes forward. All right. There were only two remaining conditions on the previous approval. One was the road maintenance agreement. Right. And the second was to meet the open space impact fee. Um, Okay, I, I have the materials from that prior, that prior plan. Do we have the materials presented to show that those things have all been done? It just seemed to me that we haven't been asked to pick up on all the details that were left hanging as conditions last time around, so it wasn't clear to me that we wouldn't need more conditions and notes on the current plan to cover everything that was of concern last time. The cleanup of the adjacent property, Things That's that been done. Were, but were not even mentioned in your submission of materials. And I guess you're telling us now that that's all been done. All except for the two that I mentioned have been done. Maureen, what, what makes most sense here? Well, the last time we went through each provision of the ordinance and a much more complete review, and if that's simply being dropped, it seems to me that perhaps we need to document going through all those steps again. When, when the board approves a project with conditions, like the Golden Ridge subdivision for May, uh, a letter goes out to the applicant with all the conditions listed, and then the applicant is responsible for resubmitting plans to me, and I verify that all the conditions have been met. So for example, usually your conditions include um, that they have to revise their plans per the town engineer's letter. So the applicant is required to submit a set of plans that purport to recognize all the town, town engineer's comments. I send those back to the engineer, they check them, and if there's something missing, they say, you didn't do this, or I get a letter back that says, they've made all the changes we need. So for this project, um, the applicant had originally proceeded as if they were going to record it, and we chipped away at all of those conditions. And the only things that were outstanding were, and my, my concern is highest with the road maintenance agreement because it was such an enormous effort and also the, the fee hasn't been paid and the expectation is that the fee would be handed over at the last possible moment probably when I hand over a recording plat with your signatures that's when the, 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 the check would come back. So this applicant has now, it, they're presenting you plans which they are saying everything that you asked us to do in the prior approval are reflected in these plans and the town engineer's letter is very short because he's gone over these plans and they reflect the conclusion of your prior approval. Does that make sense? That's why you're not getting a long letter from the town engineer, because everything that was debated last time is now reflected in these plans. The exception is the road maintenance agreement. And that's, to me, still hanging out there. And I think the applicant is thinking that if there's another, another lot, then obviously the road maintenance agreement has to be amended to reflect that last lot. And you know, there was a lot of effort put in by the applicant to clean up what was not a good situation with the existing road maintenance agreements, and I'm just concerned that's going to be lost. And that's, to me, the big, the big kicker in this is whether the applicant records that older subdivision and takes and records that recording those those road maintenance agreement, or whether the board and the applicant can get this all together in sufficient time that we can get the new road maintenance agreement recorded with all the new plans. But it is my understanding that the plans you have before you are consistent with everything you wanted from the prior approval, with those two exceptions. Okay. That's not something that, that I don't know, did other people have an opportunity to kind of cross-reference what we talked about and approved before to see if it was here? Because I was assuming that that prior subdivision, that all we were doing was a small change and not kind of looking at the whole package again. I assume that too. Mm -hmm. So, I, I think. Go ahead, Henry. Sorry, but if it's been checked out, and I assume it has been checked, I mean, it's not something that, um, in other words, it's missing. I mean, the staff seem to have checked it all out, and it seems to have passed, and only those two, uh, two items 
the road maintenance agreement seem to be outstanding. So what is the comeback, for example, if it's not being done correctly? A, a condition on this approval, a continuing condition on this approval, and, and or perhaps an additional note that doesn't appear on the plan or that would remain on the plan. Or we could copy all the notes from the prior plan and all the conditions from the prior approval and simply append them to any new approval and we'd have it all covered that way too. Maureen? Um, I have the approval from May yep. and perhaps it would um, provide the board a little bit of comfort if we can go over each of those conditions and the applicant can point out how you've made those, adjust those adjustments and they're reflected in the current plans. So the approval was dated um, May 18th, excuse me, May 17th, 2011, and there was the be it ordered motion, and then the conditions were number one, that the plans be revised to address the recommendations in the town engineer's letter dated May 11, 2011. I have an email from the town engineer saying that the plans have been revised. Those plans were revised to reflect his conditions. And then tonight, you have it attached to the memo from me uh, uh, comments from the town engineer addressing what he wants changed and you can see it's a very short letter there's only one thing on it because everything that you asked to have that he asked to have changed before are reflected on these new plans so the town engineer actually compared the two plans with his old letter to make sure everything he asked for in his old letter is on not the old plan but on the new plan right Second item, that a note be added to the plans indicating that down trees and other debris near lot 2, 8 Golden Ridge Lane be cleaned up. Is that note on the plan? That note is on the plan and the work has been completed. Is that, a, I didn't see that on the new plan, that note. That's because it's been completed. I mean, it, the note was on the previous plan. Right. The work has been done and I probably, for that reason, took it off of this, this plan. The board wants to know added to this plan again. I mean, you, you, I mean, you can ask the applicant to do that. Okay. It's just, just a quick question. When you say it's been done, oh, sorry. I, I'm sorry. It's just that I, I've been uh, spoken to by the people that record our meetings, and uh, we need to do a better job of speaking into the mic. So. Okay. <laughs> when you, when you say it's been done, I mean, is the debris still there, or is it been removed? The debris. The debris. Well, the. Uh, I didn't hear what you said. Um, as far as I know, the the fallen trees have been removed. What about the proposed plantings? The proposed plantings are on the plan. They were on the previous plan. They're on, and they haven't changed from this plan. Um, those have not been planted, but they're, they're shown as being proposed. On this current plan? Correct. Okay. So item three is that written confirmation be provided from the Youngs that they grant permission for the proposed plantings and the debris cleanup <coughs> or the plan will be revised to eliminate the plantings and the cleanup. I have received that letter from the Youngs. Okay. Okay. Item four, that a note be added to the plans restricting activities outside the building envelope to the installation of driveways and utilities. And that note is on the, the current submission that you've made. Yes. Maybe. Yes. I believe okay. it is. Um, five. That road maintenance agreements be submitted in a form acceptable to the town attorney, signed by the applicant and any other parties, and recorded in the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds. This was quite an effort because it was an effort by the applicant's attorney and the town's attorney. And my understanding is we now have a document that everyone has agreed to, but it just has not been signed. And my understanding is the, all the parties have agreed to sign it, but they haven't actually signed the agreement and recorded it. So there's been a ton of work to get us to the threshold. We haven't actually walked in the door. One correction there, Marie. Um, the document has been signed, okay. but it hasn't been recorded. Okay. And that was for the four lot subdivision. Right. Okay. So that's the, that's the one that I think has the most value that we don't want to lose. And if this application for the fifth lot is approved, that would have to be amended anyway to reflect right. the new lot. So right. the hope is that um, either the applicant will record that before the prior approval expires or that there will be time to do a minor change to it to add the fifth lot 
collect all the new signatures, and get it recorded as part of this new approval. And then um, that the applicant pay an open space impact fee that has not been paid yet. That's being wrapped into this uh, current application that instead of a fee for one lot, they would be paying a fee for two lots. Uh, and then the plans be revised per the above conditions and submitted to the town planner for review and approval and that there be no recording of the plan until the above conditions have been satisfied. So because condition five and six has not yet been satisfied and because the applicant is coming forward with this new request, um, we still haven't recorded the plans. The new request being? This fifth lot. Oh, okay, okay. So that's the outstanding items from the prior approval. Okay, I had not realized when I read the town engineer's letter, it wasn't apparent that he actually had cross-checked a new plan against his old comments. But if you're saying he has done that, then that, that's certainly helpful. Can you update us, Maureen, on what we do or do not yet have from the Conservation Commission? Um, it's our determination whether to accept money or to require um, the, the easement area. And we do that with a recommendation, um, listening to a recommendation from the Conservation Commission. My understanding is we don't yet have that recommendation. Is that right? No, you don't. And, and the last time you approved this, the Commission just did not get to this and you had to make your decision without their advice. Their advice is, is uh, not, you're not held to it. In fact, they have, um, their, their advice is recognized in the ordinance for resource protection permits. You typically, there is nothing in the ordinance that says that the Conservation Commission has to comment on open space and trails, but typically they do, and typically you listen to their advice and you, you factor it into your decision. So the last time you approved this for the fourth lot, the Commission just did not get to the point where they could give you a recommendation. Their workload was too heavy and they hadn't gotten to it. I had fully expected them to be able to provide you a recommendation tonight. However, because of illness and conflicts in scheduling, the Commission had to actually cancel last week's meeting. So they were not able to provide you um, with any advice. Uh, they are having another meeting in October. It will be before the October Planning Board meeting. So it will be kind of their last ditch chance to give you their opinion on this. Anyone want to comment on that? I have a question. Is the snowmobile trail an um, official trail of any sort or just informal? It, it's a very casual trail. There's no legal public access rights to it that we're aware of. Um, however, when the planning board reviews subdivisions, there is an open space requirement, uh, and the planning board has the final determination authority of whether you're going to accept land to meet that requirement or whether you're going to accept a fee to meet that requirement. Um, you do not need to wait for the commission. You could make a determination that this has or has not value. Uh, I guess my question to the rest of the committee would be, does this have any real value if we don't have the rest of it? If I could answer that. Um, the, the piece that connects to Ocean House Road was a site plan application that was before you this month in your workshop. So, and I have spoken with that property owner and they are amenable to discussing creating that, that, end, that other link. So there is, if the board is interested in this, there is a, a very strong chance that you can obtain the other pieces. So can I think we should. Can you identify the owners of the properties that this, we have in front of us, I don't know if that, this is up there, we have in front of us a potential trail that would extend from Golden Ridge Lane to Route 77 behind Rudy's, but it crosses three properties, actually four if this ends up being two lots. So, I mean, this is actually um, a blow up from the town zoning map. And you needed it in order to understand the region. It, it, it's kind of hard with the way this property is, is uh, shaped to figure out where it connects to. But uh, the big heavy line right through here is Route 77, Ocean House Road. And then you've got the original section of Golden Ridge Lane right here. And the heavy 
solid red line is an existing town trail that runs right next to Golden Ridge Lane and there's public access rights from that from Route 77 down the side of Golden Ridge Lane and then over and this trail right here extends all the way to Great Pond. Uh, the advantage of this proposed this potential trail which is this section right here on this property is that it actually gets fairly close to the BA district, the business district that's on Route 77. So to answer Elaine's question, um, if you start from the proposed section of Golden Ridge Lane, which is right here, then the path would pick up and cross over, I believe it's lot four of the proposed subdivision, and then it crosses, potentially, could cross over a short section of the land owned by the Good Table, and then it crosses into uh, land that's owned by Rudy's, and then Rudy's has frontage on Route 77. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. And so could we um, mandate that then that access extends down Golden Ridge Lane to meet up? You, you don't need the extension. You, you, yes, from the point, if you were interested in this section of trail right here, you would also want to create a public access right from this point down to the big heavy red line. Is that your question? Yeah, that's okay. my question. So it seems like we should wait to hear from the Conservation Commission on this matter and therefore table this issue. I would tend to agree to that, particularly since the applicant would prefer not to do this. I would hate to impose something like this on the applicant if the Conservation Commission does not think it's important. On the other hand, since we haven't had any town input on that question, I guess I'm reluctant to give up on that opportunity, particularly since there is now another property before us um, that seems to make this a real possibility to extend it the entire way, if it's something considered useful by the Conservation Commission, which has I think a broader sense of trails and objectives than perhaps we do in any particular trail. So that would be my sense. How do the uh, snowmobilers use it now? Where do they go? How do they get to this trail? The, my understanding is that the snowmobilers probably start here and they go all the way through here. They, they basically go where we're showing the red line. Isn't that a the, 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 uh, I, I think I walked this road. It, I, um... At the site walk, mm -hmm. you walked from here up this road, yes. Right, right. And it's not a road right now, but it, it yeah. will be post road. Carolyn, did you want to say something, Victoria? Um, <laughs> well, I would just say yes, I agree that I would like to hear from the Conservation Commission what they have to say. And even though the applicant is uh, reluctant to go with the trails, I would go back to. Um, our subdivision chapter 16 in which it does say um, if there is a, the opportunity for a pedestrian easement, especially if it um, provides access to, and one of the things is um, shopping centers. I know we don't call the business district a shopping center, but this is exactly where the trail would lead into. And uh, I would just say I can only hear the opinion, but I would also rely on the wait time of subdivision needs in regards to the trail system. Now I do have a question. Carol Ann? How uh, close does this come to the building envelope? How much could this infringe on somebody's privacy? The uh, closest building envelope is located right at, uh, I'll call the head of the, the trail. So it does cross lot five it, and four. Correct, correct. Um, once it gets down in the lot four, then you're down in, along the edge of the wetland and you actually cross wetland from this point. Um, you start crossing wetland at this point. But it's not in the building envelope on lot four, is it? At lot five, it's, I'm sorry. It's right next to the building envelope on lot four. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, lot on five. lot five. Right next to, so it's, it is, for all purposes, what, the same thing you've got dotted here as That's the correct. Snowmobile trail. That's correct. Okay. Could you just relocate that last little portion of the trail to move it over to the property line? It could be, yeah. Yeah, what I'm, what I'm showing is, is the existing 
Yes. Um, snowmobile trail. So then the access would be up Golden Ridge Lane or from the existing pedestrian easement up Golden Ridge Lane and then over to lot four or lot five depending on where the entry point would be. I have a question. Liza. So when this um, issue was before us last time, we were talking about um, trading off um, the open space impact fee for one lot for this a very similar easement. And are we talking about still that trade off one lot fee for this easement or two lot fees for this easement? Or is that something we, we have discretion over? The, the ordinance says that um, there's a fee that's been established, and we know that we, we I was using the wrong numbers, so the numbers are a little <coughs> adjusted, but it's either $4,320 or 12,500 and something something square feet. So per, the, per lot. Per lot, yeah. per lot. So um, usually if applicants are donating land, they are trying to not donate any money at all. So what we would be looking at, and I've had conversations with Mr. Mitchell about um, the square footage of the easement and that we'd need an easement down Golden Ridge Lane and there is a potential for this donation to completely eliminate the need to pay a fee. Um, we haven't run the exact numbers uh, primarily because we were waiting, all of us were waiting to hear what the Conservation Commission had to say. Um, the applicant has made it clear that they'd rather pay the fee. Um, so it's, we're hoping that we, it was, we were really looking forward to hearing from the Conservation Commission. Right. Okay. Okay, thank you. So for square footage, it doesn't matter whether we get an easement or we get outright town ownership? We have never, yeah, we haven't treated them either, either. We haven't treated distinguished in the square footage. It can be an easement or it can be fee ownership. But the, would the ordinance allow us to request fee ownership? Were that, were that to be our preference? That's more a question, not... I think you could discuss that with the applicant. Um, the board, I don't think the town has ever um, pushed for one over the other. It's tend to be more of a cooperative arrangement between what the applicant is willing to donate or provide and what the, what the town would like to accept. I can tell you we've had, we've had at least one developer who conveyed a large conservation easement to the town and five years later said, why didn't I just give this to you? I'm like, I don't know. And, and then subsequently followed it up with actual a fee title to the whole thing. So I think, the, I think the first piece is to figure out what the board, whether this is something that the town feels would fit appropriately within its Greenbelt trail system. And, and then if the board feels that, then we can work out whether it's an easement or fee. Uh, I think the applicant's representative can go back to the applicant and say, you know, this is what we're looking at. Were you referring to the a, uh, fee ownership in the easement? Is that what you? I get my question was when you calculate the square footage being given to satisfy the statutory requirement, do you get the same amount of credit for giving an easement as opposed to giving fee ownership? Because an easement is not as much of a property interest as fee ownership is. So it was, I just wanted to confirm that for purposes of satisfying the ordinance, they're treated basically interchangeably. And then there's another question as to whether the town would prefer or would prefer not to have fee ownership in something like this and, and whether if we were to get to that point, the applicant would want to address that. And who does the maintenance? The town. If, yeah, if, it's, if, if, if we get to the point where the town obtains a pedestrian easement for the trail, it would be added to the town's green belt trail system, <coughs> which the town is responsible for maintaining. So for all intents and purposes, they're the same? Mm. Yeah, that, no. I mean, the, the, no. for, for our purpose of use, it doesn't matter. Um, I mean, there is for two different... Asset. We don't treat them, yeah, we don't really treat them differently in terms of use. Um, it might be a little different in terms of calculating the fee. We don't calculate 
pedestrian easements into the fee, total fee amount, not the amount we collect, but the base number that we use to calculate the fee. So the bottom line is, sorry, I didn't turn around. Can you take it back? Can it be taken back? No. Then that's my question answer. So just to clarify, Maureen, so if pedestrian easements don't get factored into the formula of the open space standard for the town, is that Yeah, what and it's, it's a, and I mean, maybe we're being a little too conservative, but when we first established the open space impact fee, um, we were trying very hard to make it um, something that would be legally defensible. And there is, there is actually some U.S. Supreme Court cases where they have treated pedestrian easements differently than land that is held in fee. So we do not count pedestrian easements into the total amount of the land we own. We do count fee ownership and we do count conservation easements, but just the little tiny strips, we don't count. Gotcha. So if our goal were to um, increase the open space that the town has um, that's using the open space standard, we would want title to this land mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. instead of taking it as an easement. Okay. Thanks. The thing is, you want to be careful, though, because if, if you have a wandering trail with a, with a fee ownership and you cut off a portion of a lot from the main body of the lot, you could jeopardize the minimum lot size calculation for the lot, which is why we tend, to, we tend to work with easements on these kind of little trails that go through the woods. Right, and the town doesn't want to own the road either. We don't, we don't want what? To own the road. Well, the would go I don't think the I'm town guessing. has spoken on whether or not it wants to own the road, but the reality is that to, for the town to own the road, it, it will be more expensive to build the road, and the applicant has been uh, very clear that they uh, feel that they're already spending more than enough to build this road. I guess I raised this question. I'm inclined to think that in this kind of configuration, a pedestrian easement makes more sense, but I just thought it was something we should talk about as we actually go to satisfying the calculation. I don't know if other people have a sense of that. Well, it seems like an easement makes sense for exactly the reason Maureen was discussing. This trail, if you owned it, you would create an island down in this lower corner of lot four and a little tiny sliver up in the upper uh, corner of lot five. They're separate lots, at least well, given be those definitions. Chopping the lot, and, yeah, they'd, become, they'd have to become separate lots. I agree. So mm -hmm. it doesn't. Okay. So the consensus seems to be that we would like to hear from the Conservation Commission, in which case, after we discuss any other questions we have tonight, I think the next move would be to table this until our next meeting and then to request input from the Conservation Commission. Maureen, is there an opportunity for the applicant to address the Conservation Commission should they wish to do that? We actually have the applicant scheduled to attend this month's Conservation Commission meeting and um, fully expect that he'll want to be there next month as well. Great. Great. So, John? Are you proposing to table the completeness part of this meeting? I think, as I understand it, since this is an amendment to a subdivision plan, completeness is a consensus issue, not a vote issue. So I guess we could we haven't really talked about that. Um, anybody have any comments as to whether the information we have is complete subject to what's been discussed? There's an outstanding road maintenance agreement that would make reference to a lot which doesn't exist in the documents currently that are in our packet. Um, and, then, and then there's this the trail issue that needs so to be resolved. Let me just understand. It's because we haven't recorded the previous plan that's why this isn't a completeness meeting? No, no, no. I, um, Maureen, you can. If you review the procedures for amendments to previously approved subdivisions, there's no requirement that the board make an absolute finding of completeness. Okay. So we treat it as, a, as a, um, an informal action by the board, that the board, because how would, you make a, well, how would you make a list of things that you need for an amendment? 
depends on what the amendment is. So instead of having a completeness checklist for amendments, we just say, is there enough information here to consider the amendment request without an actual vote? Can we schedule a public hearing? Yes, if we table it, we can also schedule okay. in a, a site walk for our next meeting. If, if the board chooses a site right. walk. Yeah. Does anyone feel we need another site walk? <clears throat> we did do a site walk to this property before. I don't. But well, I wasn't we here the first time, um, so I could use a site walk, but I don't know if I can just go out there and look at it. You can't. You can personally with the applicant's permission, go on to the property. You can't have any discussion with anyone. And I mean, if, you're, if you would like, I can accompany you and try to make sure you see the things that the board saw last time. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have permission. <laughs> Great, thank you. So uh, I think that this is complete and uh, I'm ready to make a motion to table it. Can I just, I have a, one quick question. And I'm sorry I wasn't here for the first time this went around, but on lot one, is there a building envelope that has ever been recorded anywhere? Yes. Or? On on this lot, Joe? Yeah, lot one. There is a building envelope. Um, it doesn't show up on on the plan. Um, The original, or the, or the, the three lot subdivision plan has been recorded. And to my knowledge, it did show a, a building envelope Does it? I'm looking. on this lot. If that's what we have in our materials, I'm not seeing it. What, the building envelope? Well, is this, well, not, is this when, different? When the oh, Golden Ridge subdivision was originally approved in 2003, there was a building envelope for Lot 1. But it doesn't seem to show on anything like that. <laughs> no. So is that something you could add? You could just pull that off with your prior approval and put it on there? Yes. If it wasn't added on there, would it no longer be part of the plan, or would it be part of the plan because it was you know, not part of the amendment? That's the kind of question I want to avoid having to answer. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a question for a lawyer? <laughs> John's going to change the plan, so I'm going to avoid so answering it. <laughs> So do we have a consensus that as far as completeness goes, we've got a package of materials we need? Mm -hmm. okay. So that's all we need on, on that one. Yes. Do so you want to make a motion, Liza? All right, great. Yeah. Um, motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Golden Ridge LLC to amend the previously approved Golden Ridge subdivision and add a fifth lot at the end of Golden Ridge Lane be tabled to the regular October 18, 2011 meeting of the Planning Board, at which time a public hearing shall be held. Second. Victoria. Any further discussion? All in favor. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. The next item on our agenda is a growth area recommendation. The town council has forwarded to the planning board a recommendation to remove Turkey Hill Farm located at 120 Old Ocean House Road and the Lovett Ayers parcel located off Loxley Road as growth areas under section 1910 of the zoning amendment and we are 
uh, having a public hearing on this tonight. Um, there are no members of the public present this evening. We have in front of us uh, a proposed memorandum uh, to the planning board based on the prior discussions in planning board meetings about this. Does anyone have any comments on our memorandum? I'd just like to say I thought it really um, gave the background and was very clear in uh, explaining what we discussed in the, and, uh, the whole zoning, RC, RA, RB, and made it clear what, uh, what the different zones are. I agree. I think it's excellent. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. For anyone who has not had the opportunity to read the memorandum but may be listening, um, the gist of the memorandum, the risk of being too brief, is that the properties, both of these properties um, are protected from development by conditions on the lots or in one case by um, ownership by the town at least in, in large part. So really the question before us is we have to look at it as though these restrictions didn't exist and the owner was in a position as actually the town is in the property that it is owns to consider the development of the parcels. And since these two parcels um, provide open space benefits to the public, um, that is, that is a benefit that we would want to preserve as much as we could were development of the, par the parcels to become a possibility. Looking at our zoning ordinance, the RB district is in some ways um, deceptively called the growth area. And although it is an area where we, where according to the zoning air, uh, ordinance, the town has identified it as a place where growth could potentially happen. It is also the zone in town that has the best protections for the town in terms of providing, according to the ordinance, the opportunity for the town to require open space in connection with the development. In the RA district, even though the individual lots are larger, and many of our large parcels are in the RA district. Should one of those come up from development, the planning board, in fact, has very few tools or fewer tools to require that open space be set aside for the town. So because of this, despite the fact that these two parcels are de deceptively titled as being in a growth area, they are, in fact, presently in the zoning um, district that gives the town the greatest toolbox under our current ordinances to protect open space and public use. So it's for that reason that the planning board recommendation is basically to keep the zoning as it currently stands. Anybody have any? Additions to that? Yes, Victoria. I do. Um, so I went to the section 19-10-3 to see what our zoning ordinance does say about amendments to our zoning map. And uh, it's comprised of two sections, A and B. And B does address changes to the zoning map. And it says that whenever um, an applicant comes before the board, they shall include the following. And there's five items. And one of the items is uh, they will tell us what the existing zoning is and what the proposed zone classification will be. And when we received um, our package of material and during our workshop, we were never really provided with a zone classification, the proposed zone. We were just told to remove these parcels from the growth area. So one of my concerns, um, besides all the points that you did make, all the points in the memo, is being asked to remove a parcel from the residence B district without any clear direction of where we're going or what purpose it would serve. Especially as you noted, uh, Turkey Hill Farm is already deed protected 
against any development. And as you noted, the Lovett Ayers parcel, even though it's not currently protected, does enjoy the highest level of protections that are available because it is zoned RB. So uh, once again, my concern with um, this recommendation to just remove parcels from the RB district without any clear direction of what purpose it serves and what direction we're going is uh, to move cautiously against adopting any type of an amendment that appears to promote a uh, single purpose goal of removing parcels from the RB zone. So I would not want to vote in favor of the proposed amendment. Excellent. Anybody else? I guess my only thought on that, and I, th I think we, we did have a meeting um, with the Ordinance Committee Chair to probe a little bit more what the purpose was behind this reference. In terms of the technical statutory requirement, I don't know that the town council under this circumstance would be technically considered an applicant. Um, but that being said, although technically, I think we could give a recommendation differently. Um, certainly that the question remains. Maureen, do you know if this question has ever come up, whether the town council is an applicant under that provision? Town council is pretty much anything it wants to be. Um, I, I think uh, we've used that provision many times when people have asked for zoning ordinance changes. I found the current provision in the zoning ordinance to be somewhat clunky. Uh, I think the process that we use to review zoning amendments is not as clunky as the way it sounds in the ordinance. It actually is written so that it almost sounds like someone is petitioning for a contract zone where they have a project in mind, when in fact often that is not the case. So, you know, if, if the board ever gets to the point where we're looking at some adjustments to the zoning ordinance just to clean up some areas, that may be one section we want to clean up. Any further discussion? Would anyone like to? Um, move the recommendation. Joe? Be it ordered that based on the comprehensive plan and the zoning ordinance, the planning board recommends that the zoning district for Turkey Hill Farm, located at 120 Old Ocean House Road, and the Lovett Ayers parcel, located off Loxley Road, not be changed from RB to another zoning district. Do we have a second? Second. Carol Ann, second. Any further discussion? All in favor? We are unanimous, thank you. The next item on our agenda is the open space impact fee update. The planning board will consider a recommendation to the town council to update the open space impact fee located in section 1631Q of the subdivision ordinance. Again, we have before us a draft memorandum. We've had a prior public meeting on this. The memorandum has been revised since our last um, public, uh, since our last regular planning board meeting. Does anyone have any comments on the memorandum? Carol Ann. And I know that the audience out there doesn't know the detail of what this says. Um, in the first paragraph, the introduction where it talks about, um, that's the last sentence, therefore the planning board is recommending that the open space impact, impact fee be updated with the most current 2010 U.S. Census numbers and new updated property value. I'm suggesting, or throwing out there for discussion, changing updated to reviewed. I mean, are we saying we want you to actually change it, or are we saying we want you to, under the terms of the ordinance, look at this and make, and make a determination? So I'm just throwing that out there as a possibility. I think it's the latter, and actually, when you compare that sentence to the actual order, I think your suggestion is a very good one. Yeah, and I, yeah, I changed it in, in the uh, proposed uh, order. 
So updated is, let's see, it's the, updated appears twice, and it's the first one where it's <laughs> changed. Okay. And I would also like to change the, uh, in the proposed recommendation, change updated to reviewed, in, to be reviewed in compliance with. So remove updated to remain, but updated, uh, reviewed in compliance with. Yep. Okay. Anyone else have any comments on that? I have a comment on that same last um, sentence in that first paragraph. And um, is it that we're asking the um, the open space impact, I think we're asking that the open space impact be, be updated or reviewed, not only to be um, um, in step with the most recent census numbers and the property value, but it all, do we also have a new community standard of open space? Or is that implied in the census numbers? Actually, the, yes, you do have a new community standard, and it's, it's not implied. It's actually under page two, the updated fee calculation. Yeah. And that's what the fee calculation does for you. It, we call it a fee calculation, but it's really, it's the community. It includes the community standard. So um, starting with the first line um, that's underlined, it says 1191 acres. Mm -hmm. That's our current amount of open space. Right. Divided by 9,015 persons. That's 0.132 acres per person. That's our new community standard. Got it. And so I think because um, the town's open space has gone up since the last set of numbers, that we should include the fact that we have a new, num a new open space number as a cause for review. So we should add that to the last paragraph, last sentence of, of the first paragraph, sorry. So, per Carol Lanchin, therefore the planning board is recommending that the open space, space impact fee be reviewed um, to be consistent with the most current 2010 census numbers, um, the new um, community standard of open space, and the new updated property value. Would that make sense? Just to reflect that we've all, not only we have change in the population and property value, but also the amount of open space that the town has. That's changed as well. I don't think that, that quite sense, reads. I wonder if what we're recommending is that the open space impact fee and community, what's the term there? Community value? Standard. Community standard be reviewed. Because the standard is the root of the fee. You, you, that's how you calculate the fee is by you determine what your standard is and your standard is 0.132 acres per person. And then you take that magic number and you convert it into a fee per household. Uh, so we take the 0.132 acres per person. We know we have 2.57 persons per household. And that turns it into a household or a lot that can be easily applied for subdivision purposes. So, but that 0.132 acres per person is, is calculated from the other information. So, so what you're saying, Maureen, is that the two key pieces of information are the census and the property values. And then those, those go into making up, into determining this uh, the amount of open space per person kind of calculation. It, it, I mean, there's, those are, we also have what we have for open space today. I mean, the town can acquire more open space. It could sell off open space. So we, we use an updated open space number. We use an updated population number. And we come up with that community standard. And then uh, when we have to convert that to something that is easily applicable on a per lot basis for subdivisions, that's when we use uh, the new household size that also mm -hmm. comes out of the census. And then we use the, the, um, the value of land to turn it into numerical fee or we can leave it as a square footage. But yeah, we're using, you know, we're updating four numbers. But it's the, uh, the thing that kicks this off, or the part of the ordinance that kicks this off, is the fact we've got a new census and we have a new valuation. 
we, those are the two pieces that I mean, the town could every I mean every time the town obtains more land we could recalculate the fee but it would take a lot of land to really make a meaningful difference in the fee so typically what we have used in the past as a trigger is the US Census and it just so happens that we have the new assessed values also coming in at the same time that the census numbers are now available. Okay. We have one comment. Don't go wrong. The ordinance standard and the town fee schedule fee, and you have amended it. I wonder if we can put the word consider to reflect. Because is it amended means that's it, we're doing it. Whereas if you say consider, that means it puts it on to them, whoever the board, whoever the uh, town council. That's. Is this the same place that? Oh, no. At the no. bottom, if you look at it, it says be in order. Da, 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 da. Right at the bottom, it says subdivision ordinance standard and the town fee schedule B. And you haven't oh, ended okay. here, and I'm saying considered to reflect. No, Cons that's considered for amendment. Sorry? Considered for amendment? Would that cover what you're trying well, to do? Well, I'm saying considered. It doesn't mean any, either way or the other, but I'm saying if you say amended, it more or less says, yes, we agree. Mm -hmm. If you say considered, somebody has to turn around and say, yes, we do agree that it should be or it shouldn't be. That's what I'm saying. What if we used reviewed in both places? Because if we use two different words, the implication is that we mean two different things. And I think in both cases, we really mean the same thing is where okay. Carol put review, don't we? Yep. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Right. I, I think the existing language is stronger. Sorry, that we're recommending that they update it and, um, you know, and well, then the fee schedule. I, I don't know. I'm in favor of a stronger language rather than reviewed and reviewed. It sounds like we're, we're not saying much other than they need to review well, it. Well, that's my, my belief <laughs> is that we shouldn't be saying that. See, so we're at slightly opposite effect. Right. right. Yes. And, uh, and I'm with him. <laughs> I'm kind of like, I, you need to look at this. I'm not saying you need to change it. I'm just saying you need to look at it. That's, that's where, where I'm coming from. Right. Yeah. Yep. Other people Except want to weigh in Except by the that? zoning ordinance, they actually do need to change it and make a choice yeah. to keep the fee lower. Yes, but that's, that's somebody else's fault. We, this is just a recommendation. So, so we might have to vote on well, my vote gets the my, How we my feel vote about that word, language. My vote, my vote gets the word considered, but uh, uh, what can I say? Does the ordinance allow for any latitude? I think we could say whatever we want because it's not binding as far as I know. Maybe it is. I mean, it, there's a difference between the calculation and the fee amount that's established. The ordinance doesn't provide a lot of latitude for how to calculate the fee. Once you calculate that amount, the council can choose to establish what they want that fee amount to be. They can't, it's going to be very difficult for them to establish a fee amount that exceeds the calculation without being vulnerable to a legal challenge. You can, however, calculate it and say, okay, the fee could be $6,729, but um, the council establishes fees and they could choose to make that number smaller. Like I said, they could also choose to make it larger, but I would be concerned with their legal ramifications if they did that. Anybody else want to weigh in on that? Victoria? Rick? I haven't heard. It's, <laughs> no. between two it's, just, it's, it's just words. Um, I would, Madam Chairman, I would, again, advocate that we make a recommendation in, in accordance with the zoning ordinance and defer from suggesting the actual money or the amount of the fee be changed or increased or decreased. I'm, I'm just saying that to stay in compliance with subdivision limits. But is that not there and it says be in order? I mean, there's no, there's no calculation in the be in order section. So 
I guess I have a, an opposed, uh, an oppo just a slightly different variation on the one word. How about so this? I guess we're, just, we're really discussing whether that word should be amended or reviewed. I uh, guess, everybody uh, agrees with everything else in there? Yeah, I agree with everything else, but I think the difference between, well, I said considered. You said amended, reviewed, I said considered. Because if you say considered, then everybody's considering what they should be doing. If you say amended, it's more or less, we're making this decision. Now, that's just my British attitude, but possibly that's how I would reflect it anyway. How about this as a compromise? Could, that we say um, the fee be reviewed to, rem to remain in compliance with the subdivision ordinance standard and that the town fee schedule be updated to reflect new open space square footage and fee amounts. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? I, I'm actually tending to look for some type of compromise too to move it forward. Yeah. yeah. Um, Maureen? This isn't going to help, but um, <laughs> the item you just had, the growth theories recommendations, um, there was a couple of people who really commented that you would have preferred a more clear referral from the council. I would suggest that you be a leader <laughs> and you say what you really mean. It's too expensive. Right, I'm on board with that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that we have a consensus on that, but we have some problems. See, I think we should. I think it's a political decision to be made, and the council should make it. So, our, I think we should tell them that you need to amend this or make a political decision that you don't want to do it because that's what the ordinance requires. The How ordinance we, requires that they look at it. Right. It doesn't require that they actually change it, but they have to evaluate it and determine do we want to raise it or not. And here's the underlying calculation of how you go about raising it. So, so do we tell them, we amend this, or do we tell them, here it is for your consideration, make a decision on which you want to do here it is for your consideration. That has my vote anyway. Anyway, but I'm open to compromise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think I guess like if the word reviewed would do the same thing as the word amended. I mean, it seems like in point of fact doesn't matter too much which word is used there in terms of what the council is going to actually do. No, I mean, in terms of what the council can do, our recommendation is really just something that has come to our attention. It's, it's entirely... But whether we tell them to review, the, review it or amend it, it's not really going to affect how they act on it. Maureen? I'll make a suggestion that you leave it the way it is with the following changes that be in order that the planning board recommends to the town council that the open space impact fee calculation established in section 1631Q of the subdivision ordinance be updated to remain in compliance with the subdivision ordinance standard, period. And then the planning board does not make a recommendation on whether the fee amounts should be increased. You know, I'll go with that. That sounds, I'm hearing that's what you, the majority of you. So we would leave go. updated as updated, but take out that in there. Yeah. Yeah. Because it sounds like that's, you're not, you're concerned about. Would it be helpful to um, read the part of the ordinance specifies the town council's obligation to you guys? Because well, I just found it. Read that out loud? Yeah, or I have it. I can read it out loud. Go ahead. All right. So, and I, this would be helpful to me, too, to read it again. So, um, under that section 16.3Q, then section 5, subsection under administration, land donation and land conveyance shall be consistent with the land included in the town inventory. 
Open space impact fees shall be segregated from the town's general revenues and expended only for the acquisition or improvement of public open space. The town shall refund to the applicant that portion of the collected open space impact fee that is not expended within 10 years from the date of receipt. The community standard of public open space, average fair market value of one acre of vac vacant land, and the open space impact fee therein derived shall be published in the fee schedule approved and periodically updated by the town council. The fee schedule shall be available for inspection at the office of the town clerk. Any required fee shall be paid prior to the commencement of construction of the subdivision and or issuance of a building permit. Does that help? It does with me because you've actually highlighted the word periodically updated. So it seems more of a direction that this should be periodically updated. Yeah. So I, I don't know if we come down to which wording we use just by taking a vote because I believe there might be some people that maybe do not support and there are some people that do and maybe the wording comes down to who wins the vote or if we can't do a compromise. Because um, I think I might be Tending to go in the direction you're going, Liza, but maybe not the two on my left and right. <laughs> well, there I am. We might, we might. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't seem like the town council has a lot of latitude in the fee here, as I read it. But I'm not a lawyer. But they may may choose to adopt the whole thing, or choose to adopt very little of it. I mean, it's a political thing, and that's why I'm, yeah. that's why I'm saying that you politically answered the question. It's on page 16. Oh, yeah. Um, page 12, page 19, page and then it leads over to page 20. At the top of page 20, it says, yeah. be schedule approved and periodically updated by the town council. But who's to say how often periodic is? Well, we have those standards when the census comes out. We do have standards on the periodically. So I guess the word is updated because it's supposed to be periodically updated. We're just not telling them which way to go. Mm -hmm. It does use the word updated. We're back to square one. Yes, well, we are. No, I think, I think Maureen's proposed compromise was the, is... In my book, yeah. It's okay. It tells them to update. It tells them that we're re recommending they update it in compliance with the yeah. ordinance. What was that second? What was yeah. that last sentence of your compromise? It was, it's the part you're having the problem with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with respect, well, the planning well, board does not make a recommendation regarding fee amounts in the town fee schedule. So I mean, I'm I'm thinking I'm thinking I'm hearing a majority is okay with the idea of using new numbers it's consistent with the ordinance but there's seems to be a lot of resistance to actually physically increasing the fees so i i think that there are by the majority i think that there are probably defined or terms in the open space impact fee that we might be able to use here i think we're all agreeing that the community standard needs to be updated. The community standard, if I understand it, is sort of the amount, the calculation of land area. Is that right? So we all agree that they need to take a new look at what the calculation of land area is. And that we're also agreeing that they need to take a look at the new census figures and use that to calculate the square footage required. Is that right? Because the community standard is the overall land in the town that's owned by the public. And the census allows you to take changes in population to affect that. So we all agree that they need to take that into account. This, the, the, the basic, the basic underpinning of an impact fee is it cannot look like a tax. Yep. It cannot look like you are establishing a tax for people to move into town because that will constrain their mobility or in your violation of constitutional rights. So it can only be a fee that's based on a community standard. And I want 
I think you will struggle less with this if you could imagine, let's say the town in the last 10 years grew by 1,000 people and took a large chunk of open space out of open space because they had to build a school or they sold it for revenue. You could recalculate this fee and your community standard could have reduced in which case you would not be legally, you, you would have no legal right to collect the fee you currently have. I mean, that's, that's the point about the impact fee. It has to be tied to what the impact is on the community, and that's why you need to keep it up to date. This fee could, under different circumstances, the fee could have gone down, and you couldn't be collecting $4,320 from applicants because you would be in violation of the underpinnings of the fee. Yeah. But so land donation is really a separate calculation, and, and we might recommend, or we might not, that the land donation, the acreage amount... But that also could have gone down. Your, your fee amount could, you, you could have recalculated this whole thing and all of a sudden find out that you only legally can collect $3,500 in a fee or 10,000 square feet in land. But regardless of your political leanings or which way um, the community standard of open space is going up or down, which it could do, it, it needs to be updated. Your, the legal underpinning for the fee is it has to be tied to your community standard and you can't put a dollar amount on it unless you come up with the value of land. I mean, right, which it no longer is though because our community standard has changed. It has changed yeah. and it happens to have gone up. Right. But the council could look at the fee amount that could result and choose not to assess That's right. the full fee for any number of political reasons as part of their open space consideration that's ongoing. So Excellent. although they need to make the calculation, they could, after making the calculation, choose not to assess the fee. And I think it's the assessed fee that ends up being on the fee schedule, which is one of the defined terms. And that all gets a little confused in terms of what we're recommending. I think we're recommending that they take a look at the new land numbers, the new population numbers, the new property value numbers, and see what it comes up with. As to whether they choose to assess the full amount of the fee, that might result from that, I think that's where we have our um, differences of opinion. So why don't we just say it? Right? Whether you choose to or not? Yeah, I guess... Um, I think some of us may want to recommend that they do. Yeah, no, well, I'm just going back to this language that says therein derived. Doesn't that imply that the fee is derived from the open space? community standard and the average fair market of one value of land? I mean, what, what, it, it doesn't, it what doesn't purpose would the word derived? Liza, as much as I agree with you in yeah. spirit, right? it derived means that your underpinning for your fee comes from that calculation. And again, you can, you can collect the full amount that is, that is calculated. You can collect less than the full amount. If you try to collect more than the full amount, and I mean, the last time this was updated, the first time we calculated this, the town really wanted to collect more than what we could come up with for a calculation. And they were told, no, you can't do that. You can't go above what you've been able to demonstrate is a legal fee. It may be that now the council decides that they don't want to establish a fee that's the full amount. But the, the amount that goes in the fee schedule is a political decision. Per your interpretation. Yes, for the third time that I've done this, that's my interpretation still. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I believe they do not have that discretion as to the land donation option. No, they don't. So the land donation, should we choose to no, do they, that? they could do that too. I mean, either the land donation or the, the, or derived the, or the fee. Well, because de derived is not equal. Right, but the land donation shall be calculated. Yes, you have to calculate it, but then what you actually put in the fee schedule is a political decision by the council. Well, we should move forward. Most likely the impact that this has on the town council is how it's presented by the planning board member. I have a question for Maureen. The, the two previous times that you did this, 
Was it instigated by the planning board? No. So <laughs> this was completely internally instigated. And if it wasn't, the planning, who would tell the planning board? How would, that, how would the required change come about? When the fee was first created, it was a re recommendation that I made based on um, changed legal, a changed legal situation, U.S. Supreme Court decisions, the planning board was uh, trying to apply a standard. We were, quite frankly, being threatened with legal action by applicants' attorneys. And my recommendation was to go with an impact fee structure to preserve what we were doing and make it legally defensible. And, the and then, and, and the town council adopted it. It was not a unanimous vote. It was almost a unanimous vote. Um, there are some people who are philosophically opposed to the concept of impact fees. And then when the new census came out in 2000, I think, you know, things are a lot faster now, but it wasn't until 2002 that we actually got our new census numbers, and that's when the recommendation was made that, by the way, we need to update this fee, and, and I that made the calculation. the recommendation came from? Me. Okay. To the town council. Yes, and, you know, for this time, I would probably have waited until the council was doing a review of the town fee schedule and said, oh, by the way, you should probably update the open space impact fee at the same time you're looking at all your other fees. Okay. Can I make a comment? Caroline? Okay, here's what I'm hearing. We all agree that it should be looked at. The part where we, we come to disagreement is how forcefully we should tell them what to do with what they're looking at. <laughs> Pretty much covered. <laughs> and I, I think you're right, but I mean, I guess the reason I ask that question is if the change takes place without us doing anything and it's not required in anything for the planning board to make that recommendation, if we're going to do it, it seems like we should be forceful about it. That, you know, we don't if we're just going to say, by the way, you should take a look at this, you know, why even bother doing it? Well, I think this came up because in a couple of recent applications and, and others that are pending, the opportunity for the town to acquire additional open space or compensation instead of that has been in front of the planning board and since, according to the um, comprehensive plan and uh, other discussions that the planning board's had and the town council and the planning board have had together, it's clear that maximizing open space is a priority for the town, balanced, of course, with public, the, the rights of, of private property owners. I think it has come to our attention, perhaps, in a way that it would not have come to the town council's attention because they don't deal with this on a routine basis. Town council sets a fee, and then they don't have to think about it. Whereas we, we're the group that has been seeing this come up repeatedly as, as we think about increasing public access and public open space for the town, just as other groups are also thinking about doing that at the same time. So I think it's appropriate that we kind of raise it for ourselves. Um, but I guess the question is, are, do we want to make a recommendation that this is a place to, in, to maximize the potential to increase revenue for open space, or is that a, a political decision and not a plan? And it's not just revenue for open space, but it's also Acres. the option of the land donation. It would be increasing the land donation number from 12,000 change square feet to uh, 14,000 right. plus square feet. And in both cases, it circumscribes the, the economic value of the property to the landowner, which is something that I think we all need to be particularly sensitive to in this particular just, climate. Just one other comment, though. It's not meant to be a thing. If you increase the impact fee, are you not liable to increase the number of um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, lots to make up the difference in the in the, in the fee. No. Don't think so. No. no. 
How about this? How about we use the word um, that the that section, the wording section 16.3.1 be updated to remain in compliance with the subdivision ordinance standard and the town fee schedule be changed to reflect the new open space <laughs> for a footage and <laughs> 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 Or use updated twice. Could say re-derived since re-derived. There we go. <laughs> no. Recalculated? No, no, no. I was that was meant to be <laughs> facetious at all. Could we could we come to um, agreement like if we just stopped at um, subdivision ordinance be reviewed in compliance with the subdivision ordinance standard? Period. That's yep. what more that was, yeah. You know, just a period and just, I, just I that. I definitely would be in favor of that if we use the word updated instead okay. of reviewed. Or you want to use updated now? <laughs> That's the word you used in here. That is a yep. joke. I, I, I can I, I that was But I think updated is just another way of saying recalculate. I mean, whichever way you go, updated, recalculate, or any of that. If you say the word considered, it does not mean we're going to do it. It's something that you should take into consideration. That's Doesn't the ordinance use the word updated? No, I just like more force. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't the ordinance require use the word updated? I think the ordinance requires that it be. It does use so, the word updated. Updated. Yeah. I would suggest we use updated. But and after the word standard. So basically, leave the, the order as is, but delete the second half of the second to the last line and the entire third line, basically, as Maureen proposed. I think, I think so. Do we have a consent? Shall I make a motion, and then we can discuss it and amend that? Sure, go ahead. OK. Um, so be it ordered that the planning board recommends to the town council that the open space impact fee calculation established in section 1631Q of the subdivision ordinance be updated to remain in compliance with the subdivision ordinance standard. Moved, anyone want to make a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? I can live with that if Liza presents it to the town council. <laughs> Can we put that in there? I think it does get presented with this full memorandum, right? You have to be there anyway. Remember, you've got that new policy with the council. Oh yeah, yeah. So I think this should be Somebody presented be in conjunction with like the last um, motion that we just made. The last recommendation. Yeah. What Maureen was referring to was our new policy working both ways that when we submit something to the town council we have a representative accompany that submission to explain it and put it in context and when the town council sends something to us that they do the same so i think that will provide that opportunity to put this in context for the council as as they're considering it Okay, we have a motion and a second. Do we have any further discussion? All in favor? Anyone opposed? All right, the motion carries six to one. Thank you very much. And I believe that is the last item on our agenda. We have a motion to adjourn. All right, thank you very much. The meeting is adjourned.